Today, I'm talking to you about how to pray and get results. How to pray and get results. For some of you, you have even abandoned the whole concept and idea of prayer because you've prayed so many times and there was no change and you're asking yourself, is there any reason why I should be praying? And for some of you, you still pray, but you really have no faith in the power of prayer. You are praying, but there is no faith there. Because it's almost as if God, when you're ready to answer, you will answer. Because I've prayed all those years, I've fasted all those years, and there's nothing you've done. And I will keep praying, and when you're ready, and, and you are praying, but there's no more faith in your prayer. There was a time in your life when you had faith in prayer. There was a time in your life when you believed in the efficacy of God's word. When you heard others testify you were so sure that yours was next but as years went by and years went by and the baby did not come as years went by and the job did not come as years went by and the business did not grow you began to give up on the power the efficacy of prayer despite the fact you go to church and you still pray you don't really believe in prayer again and if you're that kind of person this is message God sent me to you today yeah God sent me to you today. Glory to God. I, I, I want us to read the Bible from Mark chapter 11. And I want to say to you, if, you, if this is what you are going through, you need to pay attention to this message. And after this message, you need to put a reminder, maybe even right now, on your phone and say, Every morning at 6.30 a.m., I'm going to join Pastor Balagi to pray. And the reason is this. I know you're going through all those pain. Why do I want to join you to pray? Because sometimes you are so discouraged to pray by yourself, you may need the help of a community to pray together. And every week we have thousands of people join us in the online prayer from all over the world. And we have testimonies of people getting pregnant. There's a testimony I shared about uh, how a man was paralyzed on the wheelchair, um, on the wheelchair and he got up as praise and worship was going on. There's another testimony I shared about how a certain guy was deaf in one ear and the deaf ear opened as we were praying and no physical contact, just to the mirror. And, and you know what that will do for you? Even though your testimonies is yet to come, it kind of inspires hope in you and say, although I've not seen my own, I know my own is next. So let's read the scripture today about... As we talk about how to pray and get results. How to pray and get results. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 11 in verse 20. And in the morning as he, referring to Jesus, as they passed by Jesus and disciples, they saw the fig tree dried up on the roof. And Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. I want to notice something. This is what I want to notice. Because sometimes... Because the answer to prayers is not instantaneous, sometimes we think God did not hear us. But the truth is this, there's a process in place that is working out your prayer answered. And though you can't see your prayer answered, you have to believe that because you prayed, the process of answer prayer is in place. The reason why I'm saying so is this, if you do not believe that the process of answer prayer is in place, you will not be able to hold on and you'll give up on the prayer itself. Jesus walked into the city and when he walked into the city, the Bible says he saw this tree and he cursed the tree and said, tree, no man will eat of you again. Guess what? When they were walking out of the city, nothing had changed about that tree. That tree was still there. They walked past it. I could imagine in my mind that Thomas tapped Peter and said, hey, see you. he caused the tree. The tree has not changed. And they walked past it. But Jesus believed in what he said and just left it there. The next morning when they were coming back into the city, they saw the same tree. But now something had changed. What had changed? The tree had dried up. But the Bible explained why it took a while. Because the Bible said the tree had dried up from his roots. So when they saw the tree in the evening, on the outside, it seemed as if nothing was happening. But within, the tree was drying up. Sometimes when you pray, when it seems as if nothing is happening on the outside, it's because you don't have an internal view that something is happening on the inside. I heard a powerful testimony from um, Reverend B. Wixton. And this lady had believed God for a certain position in a company. And she had met Brother Bill Wisting 
and they had agreed in prayer, and there was a word that you know that this job is yours. And two weeks after, she got a letter and said, well, sorry, we can't take you. Um, there's another person we took, and she took that person. And maybe three months after, the lady saw Brother Ben Wilson again. And Brother said, how is your new job? He said, oh, well, I didn't get the job. And Ben Wilson said, that's impossible. We agreed in prayer and believed and received it. How come you didn't get the job? And he said, well, you know, it's okay. Someone else has the job. And Brother said, no, 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 no. We can still agree for that. He said, sir, someone else has the job. He said, it doesn't matter. God did not say, if someone has the job, we can't pray. He said, we should tell him what we desire. And they went together and agreed again and prayed and repented of unbelief and doubt. And guess what? A month after, she got a letter to resume that job. And what had happened was that when the other person that resumed, resumed, the other person got a better offer from that company, moved in there. And guess what? She began to move into that place. Sometimes you don't see what is happening that is causing the delay. And once you don't see what is happening causing the delay, what happens, and let me say something to you, this is the reason why many people are not consistent in their prayer. Why are they not consistent? Because as they pray, they can't see the other end of the prayer. The Bible says Jesus Christ spoke to the fig tree. By the time they walked past in the evening, the fig tree was still the same. They could not see inside the tree that the tree had begun to dry off from the roots. So on the outside, it seemed as if the prayer was not working. Meanwhile, the prayer was working. When this woman gave up, she didn't understand that the way it would work was this. The woman will resume her job and work for a month or two and move somewhere else. So then, she gave up on her prayer and this will happen. Once you are in the process of prayer and your answer, your answer is in the process and you somehow give up and break down, either you forget about the prayer, you begin to doubt the prayer itself. What happens is that it's like you get pregnant and you abort the baby. Most Christians, what I can accuse them of is not that they do not pray. What happens is that they are bought spiritual answers. They are bought prayer answers. So they are praying for a job. Once it doesn't happen in three months, they are bought it. They are praying for funding. They, once it doesn't happen in three months, they are bought it. They are praying for an expansion and a scaling of their company. Once it doesn't happen within the definite time, you are bought it. What you must trust God is this. When you are believing God for something, trust God with the timing. The Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. It says, follow them, go through faith and patience. What is faith? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. He said, follow them, go through faith. How did they do it? Through faith. And what patience? What is patience? The ability to be constant. I'm still doing what I have to do. Despite the fact I've not seen the desired result. It's not enough to do it for one month. It's not enough to pray for a husband for one month. It's not enough to join the primary for one month. He says, I'm consistent. He said, Joy. He said, he said follow them. Go through faith and patience inherited the promise. The people that see the promise manifested are those that through faith and patience. So what happens is that people are believing God for something and it doesn't happen in three months and they've given up. No, sir. If you are going to see manifestation with the fact that you are praying, you are going to be patient. And patient does not mean folding your hands. No. Patient means you are going to be consistently constant. This is where the Bible says it in Romans chapter 4. It says, Abraham was not weak in faith. Rather, he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He took a while for the word to come to pass, but Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. The major challenge is that while you are waiting the contracts, while you are waiting the appointment, while you are waiting on the government policy change, in that moment you will stay in a place and say, Lord, it's been taking four months, but I know you are faithful. Lord, I know you are good. Lord, I know you answer prayers. I lift up my hands towards you. Everybody thinks you are stupid. Everybody thinks you are useless. You lift up your hands towards heaven because we serve a God that does not disappoint. And when you have that kind of attitude, you know what will happen? You will have a testimony. The major problem is this. And let me say this. The number one reason people don't see answer to prayers, they are not willing to stand true and stand to see their prayer answered. This is how Paul says it. Paul says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, he says, haven't done everything to stand and there's nothing else to do again. He says, stand. That means... You have practiced every spiritual principle that you should practice to bring about manifestation. He said, when you have done everything, it's a stand. That's what you should do. So the Bible says this, and Jesus said unto them, um, uh, 
sorry, and Jesus said unto the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you, you can say to this mountain, he said, whosoever, brother, shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, but shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. I want to notice this. He says that, and Jesus said unto them, he says that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Let me read it again. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you. So this is what Jesus Christ did. When they saw the tree wither away, they were concerned. So Jesus began to explain the spiritual principles and operation in causing that tree to wither. And this is what he began to say. Why am I saying this? There's some of you right now, as you're listening to me, maybe you have an aged mother that you're concerned with. Or maybe you're trying to do an international transaction and there are some government policies that is involved. Or maybe you're waiting an appointment from a governmental body or from the government himself. Or maybe you're going into a marriage partnership and there are some obstacles to a transaction. There's a particular funding you're expecting and there are obstacles. He says, this is the way we move mountains. In the kingdom kingdom of God, we can move mountains. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of Matoka Sheke, in the kingdom of God, we are not powerless. In the kingdom of God, we can move mountains. Atokeye, we can move mountains. Hallelujah. The mountain of infertility can be moved. Hallelujah. The mountain of addictions can be broken. Hallelujah. The mountain, the mountains of satanic barriers can be moved. The fact that in your family, everybody has not crossed the line, crossed the line financially, crossed the line in their health, cross the line in their age does not mean you will not cross it because we have the power to move mountain. See what it says here. He says, For verily I say unto you, verily means most assuredly. Verily means I guarantee this it will happen at any time, anywhere. He says, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what am I saying here? Jesus began to explain how faith works with prayer. Prayer is a spiritual principle. Faith is a principle. He said the way faith works in prayer. So there is the oppression of faith that is active in prayer. I will talk a lot about the prayer of faith, the prayer of supplication, the prayer and different kind of prayer. Pray it in the spirit. He says that whosoever shall sit on this mountain. Listen, the way it works in prayer is this. He said number one. The, the power of God is released by faith. But the force of faith is released by speaking. The force of faith is released by speaking. The force of faith is released by speaking. Until your desires are vocalized, you have no right to expect faith to work. That, what does that mean? When people, and this is one of the mistakes in prayer... When people go to God in prayer, they complain and complain and complain and complain and complain. God did not say, I respond to your complaint. He says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. The mountain must be specific. Don't just say, God, I'm raising money for my business. No, sir. That is not specific. You are going to say, Lord, my desire is for 585 million naira for my 2021 project. That is what it means to speak onto this mountain. Don't just say, Father, give me a job. You can get any kind of job, including a driver's job. Say, Father, that job in XYZ company for the post of a senior analyst, I receive it by the power of the Holy Ghost. You have to be very specific. Don't just say, Father, I need a house. You will declare. It's a three-bedroom house on the downside of Ikoi, right in front of the water. That's what I'm looking for. Whosoever shall sail to the mountain. Let me say something here. The reason why a lot of people are not specific in speaking to their problems or not specific in their desire is because there's a resident fear that that thing will not happen. So he says, make it so broad so that in case it doesn't happen, it can fall inside. And once your prayer is predicated on fear, it will never work because things that work in the kingdom of God are predicated upon the principle of faith. He said, whosoever shall say. So the reason why people don't want to ask, Father, I want a husband. Ah, don't be too specific. You don't know this and this and this. 
predicated upon fear. Some people, it's not just fear, it's predicated upon a scarcity mentality that what I'm asking God may not be available. So God will give me what's available. Listen to me. Ephesians helps us understand it. It says, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly far beyond that which you can ask or think according, hallelujah. He says, exceedingly abundantly far beyond what we can ask. He says, what you can ask or think. When your thinking is over, God can surpass it. When your thinking is done, God can surpass it. Because God is able to do exceedingly, not just exceedingly, abundantly, not just abundantly, above all, not some, all you can ask or think. If there is a man that can pray, there is a God that can answer. If there is a man that can pray, there is a God that can answer. The problem with prayer is that there are people that don't know how to stay in the place of prayer you are going to stay there like Elijah Elijah told the his servant he said go and check if the hand has formed in the atmosphere go and check if you see a cloud he came back the first time there was no cloud he went back to prayer and began to persist he was praying listen to me the servant went seven times some people would have gone one time and say God you know to give me the place. Some will say, God has changed his mind. But Elijah understood the power of persistence in prayer. God can answer your prayer, but are you persistent in prayer? Most people that are persistent in prayer do not know how to be persistent and be in faith. They are still praying, but guess what? They, you know, their faith is no longer in the prayer. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. There are people that step into this. Listen to me. We are going into 21 days of intense fasting. After the 21 days of intense fasting, we will follow up instantaneously with 19 days of intense thanksgiving. And when you go into that kind of season, you ask people, what are you praying for? You will be surprised that people enter the season, they enter into a deep season of prayer without expectation. Don't you realize that when there are no goals, faith cannot work. When there are no specific goals, faith cannot work. People came to Jesus Christ, said, heal me. And Jesus Christ saw their condition, yet he asked them, what do you want me to do? Listen to me. There is a way that confident and bold asking invokes the power of God. Hallelujah. There is a way that confident and bold acting invokes the power of God. I love what Elijah said before the prophet of Baal. He said, the Lord that answered by fire, let him be God. The Bible says, and Elijah came, uh, Elijah came as the the sacrifice. He looked at the sacrifice. He said, let's make this difficult. He said, pour some water. He says, pour some water. Let God be God. Oh, he's not God at all. There are some times you just need proofs that God will show up in your life. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So Jesus began to explain to them how they will receive answers to prayer. He says, the first thing you have to do is this. He said, verily, assuredly. He said, this, when he said, verily, guarantee this works. Then he said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Next week, I will cover a lot of this. I want to share with you a testimony in our church. There's a lady, this lady, you know, the doctors told us when she was a child, a young girl, and say, hey, you will not be able to have a child because, you know, something has gone wrong with your reproductive system that's why your periods are irregular and all of that kind of thing and she settled for it in fact she was not looking for what to for marriage and all of a sudden a man walked up to her a man of faith and began to say to her you know what let's get married and she said no you don't want to marry me he said why he said because i know i can't have a child what was the, the point point? and the man said but you belong to a faith church because if you come to a harvest that you know we're strong on faith we believe in the power of god he said we belong to a faith church why not let's marry and begin to believe god for this but i love the fact that the lady made full disclosure of her medical condition and they got married and that was it and the first year no child the second year no child the third year no child the fourth year no child the fifth year no child but they began to be intensive in faith. They began to believe and receive and believe and receive. And the fifth year, they had 
what a set of twins. And meanwhile, there's nobody in the husband's family that has twins, nobody in the wife's family that has twins, just by the power of the living God, just by the power of the living God. During our early morning prayer meeting, a lady shared this testimony just two weeks ago. She said, during the early morning prayer meeting, and I want all entrepreneurs to hear this, because entrepreneurs and, and smart people have the tendency to think that the power of God cannot work in business. I said to them in the morning, I said, this morning I just feel a staring that let's believe and confess and declare. And the lady said, you know what? I stay in London. This is fire London. And I'm just believing God for my finances. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, and began to declare for our finances. He said, I began to believe for a hundred thousand pounds. It seemed big and stretchy. He said, I began to believe for that. He said, the next day, my brother called me and said, my sister, the company I run that is so successful right now, I've never compensated you for what you brought into it. I said, what do you mean? He said, so therefore, I'm going to give you $10,000 cash and I'm going to give you $200,000 worth of shares. She said, pastor, this is big. But that is the power of prayer. And that leads me to the next thing. How does prayer work? One of the way prayer works is that prayer begins, see, as you are praying. Because the reason why some of you feel your prayer are not answered is this. You do not understand how prayer works. Let me give an example. If you are used to maybe mobile banking or some other banking that is not known to a lot of people, what happens is that someone can send you money and you are not aware that you have the money that your money is on your account. If you don't have a text skin, an SMS alert platform in your account, someone can send you money and you have an ATM card and you don't know you have money. The reason why a lot of people, please pay attention, feel as if nothing happens in the place of prayer is very simple. The reason is this, because they do not understand how prayer works, how God answers prayers, how the answer to prayer is manifested. This is how prayer works. Number one, when you pray, one of the things God does is to begin to touch the hearts of people that are influential in the process of your desire. In the case of this lady, she asked for a hundred thousand pounds. It was her brother that was there. Let me tell you something. You are the one that thinks you are asking God. There's nothing you, have, you need or you want to ask God that comes as a shock to God. In fact, the fact that your cost to your mind shows that God has supplied it. The fact that your cost to your mind shows that God has provided it. You know why? Every need is a proof of a supply. Hallelujah. Every need is a proof of a supply. So how does God answer prayers? By touching the heart of influencers. The same thing happened in the case of Nehemiah. Bible says that the king noticed Nehemiah. So one of the ways that God will answer your prayer is this. He will begin to touch the heart of certain people. But most of us are not sensitive to see that movement and say, wow, God has begun his work. He's touching the heart of key people just because he wants to move something. The second thing that happens in prayer is this. In the book of, um, in the book of Daniel chapter 2, verse 18. How does prayer work? Because sometimes when people say prayer is not working, it's because they do not understand how prayer works. Number one, when you are praying, God begins to touch the hearts of key figures, key people. The same thing happened in the case of, in the case of Mordecai. As Mordecai prayed, the Bible says the king could not sleep. God was drawing his attention to Mordecai. Many of you are praying right now, what you call that your prayer is not working is actually God pointing people's attention to you. But you are impatient, you walk out of it. The second way prayer works is this. Prayer works because prayer gives insight and intelligence. Prayer gives insight and intelligence. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 2 verse 18, and he urged he them to ask the God of heaven to show them mercy by telling them secrets so that they will not be executed with the other wise men of Babylon. I want to notice something. The Bible says they were, that it was a prayer. Let me read the King James to you. King James says that they would desire the mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellow men should not perish with the rest of the wise men in Israel. One of the things prayer does is this. Prayer begins to give you intelligence and insight. As you begin, let, let me say this. Sometimes when you pray, the answer to your prayer is not something that happens outside. Let's say that you are praying because you have a marketing target or you have a revenue target. And as you are praying, 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 sometimes what you, most people expect is that outside of themselves, something will happen. That can happen. 
But most often what happens in prayer is this. As you are praying, there is an opening up of a spiritual portal inside you. And as the portal opens, there is a transmission and infusion of ideas, of concept and revelation. All of a sudden, you need the place of prayer and you walk in a conversation. An idea drops into your mind. You take note of that idea, you execute it and bam, it happens like that. And what you don't know is this, that that idea was a result of your prayer. You walk into a conversation and you're wondering, wow, this is exactly what I needed. There are conversations I've walked into and when someone is just talking carelessly, God will speak to me and say, that thing you ask in prayer, this is it. But the reason why I'm able to recognize it is because I know how God is in prayer. There are many people that miss their answers to prayer. And the reason is simple. Because when God is inspiring those ideas, giving us revelation, sometimes it's a book you are reading. And, you know, something will just flash out of you and say, try it. It's a conversation you are having. And someone just say, why not? I say, try it. But as you do that, what happens to you is very powerful. That that will be the answer to prayer. So sometimes... The prayer provides insight and intelligence. For Daniel, there was a big case nobody could solve. It was a huge managerial leadership case that involves dreams and interpretation. It was a very, very tough thing. Scientific knowledge was involved. And Daniel says, hey, let's relax. We can ask of the secret of the God of heaven. That means that prayer can provide us with answers and, um, and insight and intelligence. What does prayer also do? Prayers breaks demonic influences. Prayer breaks demonic influences. Mark chapter 3 verse 27. He says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his goods. There are many of you that you are not comfortable with certain trends in your family, certain trends in your marriage, certain trends in your health, certain trends in your job, certain trends in the life of your teenager, certain trends in, the, in, your, in your real estate business, certain trends in your revenue. What you do is this, before you go ahead, see what the Bible says. He says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man. Before you start doing physical things to address your problem, you have to bind the strong man first. The goods of the strong man cannot be destroyed except the strong man is held captive. Who is the strong man if not the devil? So what you do first is this. Before you start pouncing from doctor to doctor looking for fibroid and infertility issue, you will go into the spirit and begin to harass and paralyze and demobilize and nullify and deactivate all the operation, all the motions, all the policies, all the, all the attacks of the devil. Once you finish in the spiritual, the natural will naturally align with it. What happens is that most people start in the natural and want the spiritual to bless it. That's not how it works. You will start in the spiritual. Hallelujah. I'm saying so because some of you today, there are things you want to see in your business. There are things you want to see in your life. What do you do? You will rise up in the place of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are certain dimensions of progress that has been stopped, that has been hindered that has been paralyzed by spiritual forces beyond you. Hallelujah. It could be losses. It could be shame. We will take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere you are, I want to get up on your feet and we're going to begin to declare prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to stand upon the finished work of Christ and upon the finished work of Calvary and begin to declare every harassment and attack, every opposition against me, against my relationship, everything that is holding on my marital destiny, everything holding on my marriage, everything holding on my job, by promotion I come against in the name of Jesus Christ and by faith I begin to declare and receive right now you begin to declare in faith and receive in the name of Jesus Christ I want to go ahead and pray we come against the devil's attack on your health upon your children upon your finance upon your job in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth even if you are sick in your body even right now the power of the Holy Ghost has come into that place where you are scaporobo Shakeda, Rakida, Rukade, Mantoke, Mantekai, Estoparoa, Extiprakadia, Extopastohara, Hola Mascapalia, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, stretch forth your hands towards me. I agree with everyone watching today. Participate in life service. Every word, every attack of the enemy upon your body, of your health, your job, your career, your children, 
I command the cancel that nullify. I stand in the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary. I stand in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the power and the ministry of the Spirit of God, I bring you the blessings of health. I bring you the blessings of healing. I bring the blessings of promotion. I say, as you desire, receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the ministry of the Spirit. Receive the supply of the Spirit. In the, of the, Spirit. In the, of the Spirit. in the name of Jesus Christ, I command that oppression to go. I command that feeling that walks about your body to leave i command the sickness to leave your body i command that fun to come through i command that job to be yours i release you that promotion today that child you're worried about i command that child to walk upright i command that child to be healed by the power of god that child that's misbehaving receive the power of god for you to walk right in the name of jesus that marriage that is shaky let the power of god bring you back together we'll give you praise and glory in jesus mighty name we pray Amen. Amen.